Hi, I'm Carla Bruni with the Chicago Bungalow Association and we're here for another installment of our How To Home series. This will be the second part of our How To Repoint Your Vintage Masonry series. I'm back with Matt Wolf from Henry Frerichsons and Matt Fugiel from Guernica Restoration. And today we're going to be learning how to mix our mortar and how to repoint that wall finally. And right now we're looking at a lime-based mortar, right Matt? Yeah, Matt's had a ton of experience working with historic lime mortars, so that's what we're using today. Uh, again, going back to our first episode, we know that this is a pre-1930s building, so we want to make sure that we use a soft mortar, and lime mortar is perfect for that. So Matt's using a hydraulic lime mortar here. It's mixed with two and a half parts sharp mason sand. It's important when you have wide joints to have a very coarse aggregate. Typically the rule of thumb is the largest aggregate in the sand should be one third the width of the joint. So we're using a coarse aggregate. And he's also mixing this mortar with a little bit of pigment. It's a buff pigment, just enough to soften the brilliant white color of the natural lime. And our goal here is to make this lime resemble old weathered lime mortar so that our spot pointing blends in with the rest of the wall. It's important when you're adding pigment to pre-blend the pigment well with the dry mortar and the dry sand first before adding water, otherwise you can get clumps of sand or clumps of lime and the pigment won't disperse evenly so that when you're pointing your wall, you might get pigment streaks in the joints. So after we've thoroughly incorporated all the dry ingredients together, we're gonna slowly add the mixed water to it. And it's, this is a critical stage in mixing mortar. We have to get just the right amount of water in the mix. The mortar should have roughly the consistency of brown sugar. And you should be able to form it into a ball and toss the ball up a few times and see if it holds together. If the ball falls apart, you might need to add a little more water to it. If it holds together, you're probably okay. You don't wanna have a lot of paste residue on your hand. If you have that, you might have added too much water to the mix. The consistency of this mortar passes the brown sugar test and the ball test, so I think we're ready to repoint our wall. Okay, and we are back at the wall that we ground out in the last episode. Looks like, Matt, you've already gotten started here. You can see in his left hand, he's got what they call a hawk that's holding the mortar, and in his right hand is the backfiller. Backfillers are the spatula of sorts that he uses to whip up the mortar from the hawk and place it in the mortar joints. Backfillers come in different widths based on the width of the joint that you're pointing. He's being careful to make sure that the new mortar is being packed well and there's no voids in the new mortar. And as he works towards the window opening, notice how he's filling those corners up, packing them tightly, making sure that he has a nice, sharp, crisp corner with the new mortar. That's important. And now he's doing his final trowel, if you will, using the backfiller again to just trowel over all these joints that he just filled. And if you notice, he's cutting the joints back just a little bit away from the face of the brick. He's doing that to make this new mortar joint look like a slightly weathered joint, so it blends in with, with the rest of the wall. And he's gonna, taking that a step further by using a short hair paintbrush and stippling the surface of the mortar to give it a rough texture. Now that Matt's done a wonderful job repointing this wall, we're gonna move on to the curing process. All right, we're back at the wall. It looks, I'm sure, like it did in the 1920s. It looks beautiful. What do we do at this point to make sure it cures properly? Yeah, so all that moisture was introduced to the brickwork before Matt pointed it up with the new mortar. Now we want to make sure that moisture stays in the wall so this mortar has a long, slow curing process. So we're going to drape the burlap over the wall to shade it, and we're going to keep that burlap damp for seven days and let the mortar do its thing. Wonderful. Well, Matt from Henry Frick, thank you again for another episode with us. Matt from Guernica Restoration, thank you so much for all the incredible work you did with us. And we'll see you guys next time for the next episode of our How To Home series. Today. Haven't worked this hard in a long time. Cheers to another successful masonry series. Amen, sister. <laughs>